Today I'm going to be talking about um, my experience so far with um, my DBT group. Um, because so far I've gone there three times. I go every Wednesday from 4 o'clock to 6, 6.30ish. It's 4 to 6 mainly. And um, so today I'm going to be talking about the first two sessions um, because they're like very similar and um, the third sec session is when we actually started like you, um, the different modules which I'll get into in the next video that I post about the third session. So right now I just want to focus on the first two sessions that I've attended and um, this is at the Mindfulness Clinic in Toronto. And, um, so far it's been really, uh, helpful. Like, not like, oh my god, I'm cured, but, um, or anything like that, but I think that the skills that I'm learning, I can definitely see how I need those skills and stuff. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm all new at the whole DBT thing. Like, I already knew what it was, and I've talked about it in other videos where I talk about my experience with borderline personality disorder. And I have talked about DBT before, but I haven't actually really practiced DBT myself or been in the proper setting to do that. So now that I am in the pro proper setting to do that, I'm just going to take my glasses off because I can see the glare. Um, now that I am in the proper setting to do that, I think it's going to be really good for me. So... The first session, I was extremely nervous to go to this group, and um, on the streetcar on the way there, I was like, I started gagging, because uh, I, I get like that when I'm extremely anxious, I gag, and I had to kind of breathe, you know, in through my nose and out through my mouth, and do all that diaphragmatic breathing skills. Um, and that helped and uh, having coffee before going was actually a really bad idea I think because the caffeine made me even more anxious so by the time I got there I was kind of shaky and my palms were sweating like profusely like it was it wasn't good okay because when I get really anxious my palms often do sweat and that's like one of like the number one symptoms that I experience with anxiety. So my social anxiety disorder was really getting in the way of me actually getting to the group, but I did go to the group. Thankfully, I'm glad I did, because missing the first session I think would have been bad <laughs> for me. So when I got in the group, um, well first I got lost, of course, even though, you know, I'm from Toronto, I've lived in Toronto my whole life, I still get lost because it's a big city and downtown area is very scary for me to walk around by myself um, with lots of interesting people that kind of like freak me out, but I finally like managed to find the building, even though I had been there before to practice going there, I still got lost, but yeah because all the buildings there kind of look the same. So I finally found the building, I went in, I went in the elevator, and uh, there's a lot of floors to go up, so. Uh, it's not like I have a problem with elevators, I just don't like how my ears sometimes pop while I'm in the elevator. So I was like, uh. And when there's someone else in the elevator, it's so awkward sometimes. So yeah, I went in, and then when I went into the room where the, the program's being held, uh, the group, I guess I should say, where the skills group is being held, um, I immediately, like, recognized, um, this lady that is one of the ladies that runs it, because I had met her before to register and to talk to her about the group, and there's two ladies there that run it, and they're a DBT therapist, obviously, <laughs> and, um, so she said hi to me and she gave me my name tag for the first day and I felt all special because I had a name tag. It said Sarah because that's my name. <laughs> so yeah, I sat down and I sat next to this girl who seemed nice. And um, we, there was a bunch of like stuff on in the middle of the table, like toys and stuff. 
and stickers and like fun things like that and I was like oh that's cute <laughs> and so they actually encouraged us to like you know play with them like every session the first one they kind of explain why they're there and it's to like you know relieve anxiety and also to be mindful of like the objects themselves and to like do skills with them mindfulness skills because mindfulness is like a big part of DBT um, which I'll get into like further detail probably not in this video because this is just like the introduction to the program kind of thing that I'm going over um, so yeah and then we were given these participant handbooks which is what we're going to be doing like all our homework in uh, we refer to it as week practice or sorry why do I say week practice as home home practice instead of homework it's home practice because some people don't like the term homework um, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna read to you guys like what they read to us well like they told us to go to this page and they went through everything and these are kind of like the rules although they're not called rules they're called guidelines for skills training um, <clears throat> So I'll just go through that right now. So number one is each participant must be in ongoing individual therapy, attending sessions at least twice a month. So for me, this is not a problem at all because not only do I have my therapist that I see at my school, which is luckily covered at my school, which is awesome because uh, the disability and counseling, the counseling disability services like are really great there and they're very understanding of mental illnesses. So not only do I have that counselor who is going to be helping me through this stuff, who is kind of, I see him more often than my psychiatrist who I also have been seeing her for like three or four years now. Um, yeah, so uh, for me that's like not a problem at all. Um, and I can understand like why why that's there for sure to like help you with what you're learning like on a more personal individual like basis uh, sorry if you guys can hear my heater it just came on hopefully you guys can still hear me as well um, number two participants who drop out of individual therapy will be dropped from the group so that's kind of going in from number one uh, number three, four consecutive absences disqualify a participant from the group. And I can also understand this rule because once you miss four groups in a row, it's probably going to be really difficult for you to like get back into the groove of things. And also for people like me who have social anxiety disorder, which I know for a fact that other people in my group do have, <clears throat> that's the more you miss things, the harder it gets to go back. And you kind of got to start from square one when it comes to exposure therapy. You have to kind of start all over again. Um, number four, participants are not to come to sessions under the influence of non-prescription drugs or alcohol. That's kind of like common sense, I guess. Number five, participants are not to discuss triggering behaviors with other participants outside of group sessions. For example, substance use, self-harm, etc. Participants' detailed discussion of triggering behaviors will be limited in group sessions. So for this one, like, I understand why it's there, but it also makes me feel like, well, what is okay to say? And I kind of brought that up in group the last time I went, and they said that when it comes to things like drinking, you can mention, but anything else really that goes into detail, like self-harm, like cutting and stuff like that, you can't really talk about. So I'm going to avoid talking about that for sure because I don't want to trigger other people. So I understand that rule as well. Number six, participants are not to form close personal relationships with other group members. Okay, this is the only rule that I have a problem with. <laughs> Just because I understand why this rule is here. Like, I really do. It's because if you do form a close, like, friendship or relationship with someone like definitely a, like a romantic relationship I understand completely that definitely should be a no-no but with friendships I think you can't really tell someone hey don't be friends with that person don't be friends with that person no one in here can be friends it's I don't really know if they can really control that but they're trying to obviously but I've 
been like, um, I've had this rule. I've had this rule like before in um, Building Bridges, the program that I was at, where I met my best friend. <laughs> and you can be friends with people like after the, the program or whatever, but just between you and me, YouTube, the whole world, <laughs> um, I don't think I'm going to really listen to that rule so much because I've already kind of probably broken it by hanging out briefly with some people out like um after the group like going home and stuff like taking the subway together and stuff like that and i don't really give a damn <laughs> because i'm the type of person where when i personally have friendships or whatever i work through like if we have problems or whatever i'm not gonna let that affect the group and i'm gonna kind of make it so we don't have problems <laughs> like I don't know, I'm a really friendly person, <clears throat> and I think, for me, like, with friendships and stuff, it takes months and months and months for me to start maybe having problems with that person, but I think there's always the honeymoon phase, which is the same in relationships, but for friendships as well, where you're kind of just getting to know someone and everything's, like, fun, I don't think there's going to be anything, like, bad that's going to make me not want to go to the group. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Number seven, participants who ask for help must be willing to accept help. It's kind of common sense. Um, of course, I think just being there is kind of admitting I need help, I want to get better and everything. Um, number eight, information shared during sessions as well as the names of other participants must remain confidential. For this one... <laughs> I said that that was the only rule I have a problem with, but I don't have a problem with this rule, but I'm kind of breaking it right now. <laughs> and it's like, they don't know my YouTube account unless I were to like be like, hey, maybe after the group or whatever, to pe certain people in the group, like, hey, if you want to watch my videos, you're welcome to, blah, 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 this is my channel, blah, blah, blah. But um, I'm not talking about specific like, I'm not giving names of people or anything. Like, I've already referred to a girl in my group, and I said a girl, or people, or whatever. I'm not mentioning specific detail. And, um, so I don't think that there's a problem. And with the information, I think that, by that, I think they mean information about the people. So, like, all these DBT skills and stuff, like, I'm going to be sharing with you guys because I really want to help other people as well as help myself because that's just the kind of person I am and that's why I make these videos. So um, I definitely will be sharing like the information, like that's the point of these videos. I want you guys to see what I'm experiencing as someone who has borderline personality disorder and um, how, how these skills are helping me so maybe they can help you. So I'm definitely going to be sharing things like that. Um, number nine, participants who are going to be late or miss a session, should call ahead of time, duh. Number 10, sexual partners may not be in group sessions together. Obviously. <laughs> Especially for people that have BPD. I can see how that would be a complete train wreck. <clears throat> and number 11, only one person speaks at a time. So those are kind of the guidelines and very basic and mostly common sense straightforward things that I don't have a problem with at all. So that's like the kind of one of the first things that we did on that first day was go through those guidelines. Um, and so just talking about this book, this hand, this little booklet thing that I already decorated with stickers as you can see. Because they have stickers on the table so I play with them and stuff. I play with the stickers. Yeah, I like I stick them on. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, so with this booklet, it is separated into different modules. So, kind of, I guess, the first part is like learning about mindfulness and everything like that. And I don't want to go into great detail because I feel like this video is really long already. I can't, I don't know how long it's been because I, it doesn't say on my thing, but um, 
yeah, and then there's, um, so this is all, like, mindfulness stuff. And then the different modules, I guess mindfulness is a module in itself. Yeah. But the different modules are distress tolerance, um, emotion regulation, <clears throat> interpersonal effectiveness. So that's what we're going to be learning <clears throat> in this group. And this this thing, this group is, I believe, how long is it? I think it was like 20 weeks. 20 weeks. Wait. Um, yeah. I think it was like 20 plus weeks long. So like we have months to learn this stuff and go through this book. <clears throat> I've already like read a lot of it like in my own time because I'm a geek and I love to read anyways. Um, so yeah, the, that was pretty much the first session of the group although when it came time to introduce ourselves like I knew that we would do I was just like I hate that and it was like say your name and one fact about yourself that you know we don't know blah 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 blah, blah. so I said uh, my name's Sarah and I go to York University <laughs> and I was just like I was so I think I was really awkward about it oh there's my foot <laughs> I think I was really awkward about it, but I was glad to get that out of, the, out of the way. And at the end of each session, we have to say one thing that we noticed about the session. Anything that we noticed at all. Like, it could be I noticed that there was a shadow over there by the wall for the majority of the time. Or it could be I noticed that I was less anxious by the end of the group, which is what I said, I think. Um, yeah. And for the second session, I'm not going to go into great detail about that because it was very much like the first session where I was, I was maybe 20% less anxious than before, but I was still really anxious about it. My palms were sweating and I was shaky and I had a coffee before going again. Um, not smart. Shouldn't do that. <clears throat> and, um... So yeah, I'm definitely going to avoid doing that from now on. But yeah, the second session was also basically talking about more about mindfulness and stuff like that. And how you can be mindful. Like our goals and stuff. Um, and, I, and I will probably <clears throat> make like a separate video on mindfulness because I cannot cover that in, in this video. I probably will need multiple videos to cover that. And I'm not an expert on it because I'm just learning about this stuff too. I knew that it existed but like I said this is when I'm trying to put this into my life. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, this is kind of just like a side note. There is this book that I read a while ago and I feel like I'm kind of living this book right now because this girl she has borderline personality disorder and she went to dbt groups and everything and i'll get the book it's right it's called the buddha and the borderline uh it's a memoir by kira van gelder or kira van gelder i don't know gelder uh, my recovery from borderline personality disorder through dialectical behavior therapy, which is what I'm learning. Buddhism and online dating. It, it's, I recommend this book, like, definitely for those who are struggling with BPD. Um, but I definitely would put a trigger warning on this book because she does go into detail about some problem behaviors that, um, she does that help her that she wants to stop doing. <laughs> like cutting and everything so definitely trigger warning on this um but yeah this book i could probably read like several times i would never get sick of it and i feel like because she went to so many dbt groups and now i feel like i'm going to these dbt groups and i'm kind of seeing what she saw like things that she learned from the dbt groups I'm learning now. So it's kind of cool that I read this book about a year ago and now I feel like I'm getting the chance to go to these groups and to better myself and 
it's awesome because it really helps this girl and this is like a true story it's a memoir so yeah I have a lot of like high hopes for this group and um, I hope you guys enjoy what I talk about when I talk about this group because I'm gonna be talking about it every week until it's over I'm gonna be like making sure that from this point on I talk about it every week and I'm gonna be posting another video tomorrow um, which is still gonna be today for you guys because this video I'm not posting until tomorrow so because <laughs> I have to go to bed and it takes too long to upload videos to YouTube but I'm gonna be posting another video on uh, the third session that I had yesterday um, and then I'll be from this point on I'll be a little bit more organized with that so like every Thursday Friday I want to give an exact day but yeah every week I will be posting a video of my latest session with this DBT group um, so I hope this was like a good introduction to everything that I'm going through right now with this DBT group and if you guys are interested in kind of going along this journey with me please feel free to subscribe and um, if you want to message me and ask me any questions or comment below ask me any questions and I will do my best to answer them um, so yeah I hope you guys are enjoying the beginning of March and spring is gonna come up soon hopefully global warming but yeah and I hope you guys are doing well well doing more than well I hope you guys are doing great <laughs> um, and yeah like I said I will be posting the next video like tomorrow which is today for you guys which I'm confusing myself I'm really confusing everybody now anyways I will talk to you guys soon uh, have a good night. I think that's when I end up posting it. So yeah, have a good night. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Blessed be.